couple of people have asked me for a tutorial on how I made my dodecahexaflexagon. And so uh, I'm going to start here with uh, building a regular trihexaflexagon, and then I'll move on to a hexahexaflexagon. And then from there, I'll move on to the dodecahexaflexagon. I'll try to be quick here uh, so that I don't bore you with the details. Um, the first thing you need to do to build a trihexaflexagon is to get a strip of paper. So I'll cut that out nice and straight, and we need to fold the strip into equilateral triangles. Now here's a tip um, to get a 60 degree angle from a 90 degree one. You need to fold this section over here in thirds and then fold it over and that should uh, form a nice uh, triangle and really you don't have to be too exact here I found that these things work best when you're when you're close but you don't have to worry about being right on um, and then once we get this folded into triangles here then uh, we'll uh, count out nine triangles and cut off the excess and folding a trihexaflexagon is pretty simple. You just uh, start uh, folding up every second fold until you get a hexagon, hexagon and then join the two uh, rough sides with tape. Mm. Then you can uh, label the trihexaflexagon has three sides. So you got one, two, and three. That's it. Um, this is important because uh, we're going to need need to know how to do this for the next step. Now for the hexa hexaflexagon, which has six sides, we're going to have to double the number of triangles we have. So we need 18 triangles, so I'll cut two strips of paper, fold them up into triangles, tape them together very carefully, and uh, count out 18 triangles and get rid of the excess. Now what we need to do here is before we fold it into a hexaflexagon we have to um, kind of uh, fold it in a somewhat of a spiral pattern. Um, and uh, once you fold it in a spiral pattern you're, you should be left with nine doubled up triangles. And uh, we know already from the trihexaflexagon what to do with nine triangles. Uh, you fold up every second one into a hexagon. And then when you want to tape up the uh, sides here, it's going to be a little trickier because some of the sides are going to be inside. Well, the two sides you need to attach are going to be inside the uh, triangle. So you'll have to just take note of where they are and slide the tape in there and uh, make sure that it matches up. And there's your hexa hexaflexagon with six sides. Once you have your hexa hexaflexagon folded, it doesn't take too much effort to go through it and uh, find all six sides and label them. Um, the numbering scheme I like to use is uh, a little number towards the uh, center of the hexaflexagon. Um, now some of these uh, sides uh, will have two ways of getting to them, so I denote the uh, other way uh, with a little prime symbol. So we've got side one and side one primed. Uh, this will be useful for the dodeca hexaflexagon. Okay, so those two are pretty easy. Um, if you haven't done so already, I recommend pausing the video and building yourself a trihexaflexagon and a hexahexaflexagon just to make sure that you can do it and are familiar with the basics. Uh, now we'll move on to the the big one, the dodecahexaflexagon. The first thing you need to do is uh, get enough paper. We'll need 36 triangles for this one. Uh, so I made a note before that uh, I could fit a, about 12 triangles on a strip of paper. So we'll need three strips for this one. And we'll just uh, fold those up and join them together.
Now, once we have these cut out, we need to join them together. I like to use packing tape because it's pretty strong and can withstand quite a few folds. And once we have these together, we need to count out 36 triangles. Measure twice, cut once. Now we can start folding. We do the same thing as before. We fold uh, the uh, strip into, uh, we double it up in a kind of spiral pattern. Now take a note of which direction you're using the spiral. In this case, I was kind of going counterclockwise, if that makes sense, uh, under the bottom and over the top. Um, because uh, the direction is very important. You'll need to maintain this direction as you fold. So when we double it up again, it will fold it in the same direction. And we'll join it together. Joining the two ends here is uh, slightly more difficult than joining uh, than what we had before. Uh, but uh, it's uh, not too bad. You just need to find the appropriate pages to uh, the appropriate slices of paper to tape together and uh, work your tape in there to get them taped properly. Now that we've folded it, we can begin the task of trying to identify all 12 sides. Um, so, I mean, the easiest, easiest, one of the ways to do it is just to blindly go through and try and uh, start uh, folding your flexagon and seeing if you can find all the sides. I tried this, I went through, and I found 10 of the 12 sides. And uh, after a while, uh, after some time spent looking for the other two sides, I decided to maybe make my task a little easier, possibly harder depending on how you look at it, um, by making a graph. And so I made a graph of uh, all of the sides that I had discovered so far. And the nice thing about uh, hexaflexicons is they have this beautiful threefold symmetry. So from this graph, you can see that. Uh, if it's not totally obvious, I don't blame you. Um, but uh, there's two nodes missing at the bottom here, so I'll just kind of fill those in. And uh, we need to uh, figure out how to get there. So I presume that uh, we can get to one of them from the uh, one double prime position, and the other one I think we can get to from the either the nine prime position or the five prime position. And I see that I kind of screwed up my diagram here, so it actually is the five double prime position that we need. But anyway, um, thanks to the diagram, I was able to target exactly where those missing two sides were located on the hex flexagon. Once you have the uh, completed uh, diagram, that will be very useful to you uh, for coloring. Now, coloring this thing is a whole different beast altogether. I'm not going to make a tutorial for how to do that, but what I will tell you is that I highly recommend you print out uh, a diagram like the one I have that um, has all of the states and all the arrows for how to get from which state to which state. And using that diagram, you can work out a path through the hex flexagon that hits every state exactly once. and uh, Based on that path, you can start physically going through and marking the corners every time you flex it to get from one state to the other. Um, mark uh, the corner with the appropriate color. Uh, once you're satisfied that all your colors have been marked out properly on each face, then you can begin the long and arduous process of shading it in, <laughs> if you wish to do such a thing. Uh, I can tell you that it took me hours and hours and hours to shade mine. So I am definitely not going to do that again. It took way too long, but the result was quite beautiful, so I'm glad I did it once. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful.